Imagine if we had technology which allowed us to closely monitor changing global environments. It could tell us what happens to our forests after extreme weather events such as bushfires or what happens to the local environment after floods. The great news is we do have a technology to help us do just that. Geographical information systems, otherwise known as GIS, are super useful for looking at changes to various landscapes such as forest and plant cover and how they respond to human activity and extreme weather events. They are computer-based tools that generate colourful maps using data collected in the field from satellites, laser scanners and photographs and are used to analyse events that happen at the Earth's surface. GIS require uh, specialist equipment and people to operate it, computer hardware to collect and store the data, and computer software to generate and analyse maps. It works like this. Data is spatial, meaning that each point is referenced to a specific geographical location on Earth. To collect spatial data, we use navigation instruments such as GPS or Global Positioning Systems. This involves a network of 24 satellites orbiting the Earth. These satellites were originally placed there by the US Department of Defence for military purposes, but are now freely available for all of us to use. These satellites orbit the Earth twice a day at a speed of around 11,000 kilometres per hour and transmit precise radio frequency signals to GPS receivers on Earth. A triangulation method is used to calculate the user's exact location based on differences between when the radio signal was transmitted by the satellite to when it was received and tells the GPS receiver how far away the satellite was. The data is processed and then displayed on a map on the GPS device. Signals from at least three satellites are required to get a two-dimensional position of latitude and longitude, while four or more satellites are required to determine the user's three-dimensional position, being latitude, longitude and altitude above sea level. Using a GPS can also calculate information such as tracking movement, speed, trip distance and estimated times and distances to specific destinations. Foresters use GPS technology to locate individual trees for harvest, uh, recording the exact location of the tree, its size and volume, so it can be traced through the processing chain. The great thing about GIS is maps generated show changes to forest cover and tree growth, and this can be used to make more informed decisions to manage forests sustainably. Remote sensing is another technology available to collect spatial geographical data. It's used to monitor canopy information of forests and produce inventory maps. 3D modelling can help foresters determine forest floor and canopy heights, measure tree volumes and monitor the amount of carbon stored in forests. This is one type of remote sensing technique called LIDAR or light detection and ranging. It's a remote sensing technique that shoots laser pulses from an aircraft to the forest canopy, measuring how light is scattered when it hits its target. Some laser strikes penetrate the canopy while other laser strikes reflect off the trees. A typical GIS map of a forest using LIDAR technology looks like this. See how it also demonstrates changes in elevation and location of roads and waterways, which is useful when undertaking forest operations such as logging, replanting and regeneration. Often different types of GIS information are combined to produce complex maps. This one combines satellite imagery with LiDAR laser scans and ground-based measurements to generate a map of the Amazonian rainforest in South America. The red areas show rich stores of carbon in primary rainforest. The dark green areas demonstrate secondary regrowth forest. The light green and yellow areas represent human activity such as clearing and farming. Forest researchers found there was a net loss of carbon stored in this forest due to recent human activity. This evidence is used by international organisations, including the United Nations, to support countries such as Brazil to preserve their forests and not make further changes to land use. 
GIS maps are also used to examine forest health and look after our ecosystems. GIS technology assists foresters with aerial seeding to ensure forest regrowth after harvesting. It also enables seeding to occur evenly across a broad area. Extreme events such as storms and bushfires damage our forests and GIS can also be used to measure the effect of these extreme events. This map shows the extent of the damage in the Victorian Black Saturday bushfires of summer 2009 and has been generated from GIS data. Although the fire started in grass paddocks, it spread to eucalypt forest where large tracts of Victorian mountain ash forest, otherwise known as eucalyptus regnans, were destroyed. Foresters used this information to recover some of the timber that had salvage value and also plan for regeneration of other areas that were completely destroyed. It's possible to use GIS to trace wood from particular trees through to the consumer, that is through what's known as the chain of custody. Wood obtained in Australia from a sustainably managed forest receives independent third party certification. This lets consumers know the wood has been sourced from a best practice sustainable forest which protects local biodiversity and the environment. More than 90% of all native and plantation forests in Australia are certified by the Australian Forestry Standard, or AFS, covering more than 10 million hectares of forest. There are other certification marks. These include the Program for the Endorsement of Forest Certification, PEFC, and the Forest Stewardship Council, FSC. Now let's sum up what we've covered. Geographical information systems are computer-based tools that use spatial data to generate maps and monitor changes at the Earth's surface to help improve management. Data for geographical information systems is collected in the field from satellites, laser scanners and photographs and referenced to points on Earth. GPS and remote sensing equipment are regularly used in forestry to monitor tree growth, forest health and carbon storage. Benefits of GIS include assessing damage from natural or man-made disasters and helping in recovery and regeneration. Being able to accurately measure the point of production and movements of the wood help foresters to plan and manage the forests more effectively. Now, as a class group challenge, why don't you see if you can locate a GPS device and have a go at determining the latitude, longitude and altitude for your school? You might like to generate a map of your school grounds, taking regular GPS measurements that indicate important features such as the administration office, your science classroom, hall and sporting field. Enjoy the challenge and good luck.